Hello everybody, Susan Moore here from Art of Crafts. Today I'm going to show you how to make one of these Victorian style lampshades. There'll be lots and lots more tutorials coming along, so I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. So the first thing I'm going to do is to use my cotton tape and I'm going to cut a piece of for approximate length. I don't bother really so much with the amount and measurements, I just use it by ear. And I'm going to take my glue and I'm going to put some glue onto the top of the frame. Then I'm going to wind the top of the frame with the tape. When I come to a strut, I'm going to go around in a figure of eight to make sure that we have good security there because we don't want the binding to become loose when we sew the fabric to it. And we keep going around like this all the way. Again, another strut. Keeping your finger, making sure that that glue keeps it in place. You can actually sew it together if you want to, but this is the quickest way and it's quite as secure. So the next strut, again, around figure of eight and then around. So that's really nice and secure. That's not going to move anywhere. So you'll notice that each frame has a certain number of panels. In this particular case, it's eight. They're usually eight or 12, depending on the size of the frame. This is a 14 inch frame and it's called a parasol shade. So the way we're going to do this, the way I do these, is to actually make each panel and the way to do that we need to make a pattern. To make a pattern you take a cushion and a piece of scrap fabric. I'm just using some lining fabric here and I'm going to place it on the cushion. Then I'm going to lay my shade or the frame of the shade onto the cushion and the cushion gives it that flexibility and I'm going to take a piece of tailor chalk and hold this in place and draw trying to keep it steady draw your shape keeping it moving putting it a little bit as you need to. So there you have your basic shape. And what we're going to do now is cut it out. So now I've cut out the shape, as you can see, in lining fabric, just needs to be in ordinary fabric. And then I'm going to take a piece of card and I'm going to stick it onto the card to give me my pattern. So what you're going to do now is you're going to take your completed template and you're going to cut out your pattern pieces and you must always cut in the direction of the bias. You must cut on the bias. So that means that way, diagonally to your fabric. So here, here are my cut pieces. I've got eight pieces and what I'm going to do now is to stitch them right sides together and all together on my sewing machine. So I've actually sewn on my sewing machine every panel together. So I have what you would describe as a little skirt. I have used about a quarter of an inch in my seam allowance and those I'm going to trim right down now. So using my embroidery scissors I'm going to trim those right down as close to the stitch line as I dare. Okay, so now I have done that. I've trimmed all the lines, all the stitch line, right down to the stitch line, if you can see that. And now we must remove all these threads. It's very important to remove the threads because once you light your lampshade, you don't want to see threads hanging about inside. This lampshade is not going to be lined because this is the first tutorial on how to make a basic Victorian style lampshade. 
So the next thing I'm going to do is to take my frame that has been bound at the top and the bottom and I'm going to turn my skirt, the cover, inside out and I'm going to put it over the top. It fits really snugly and I'm going to stretch this over using my seam lines on the top there. I've allowed on my uh, template, I allowed half an inch on either end, so I'm just going to put a stitch, a pin rather, dropping them all over the place, in there, and one there. This takes about a half an hour of adjustment, so I'll just demonstrate, and I'll do the opposite side. A couple of pins, you, it's, it, each one, each shade, is so different you'll never get it perfectly right the first time you have to keep taking it off put it on maybe stitching a little bit more just to adjust it so we'll pin all the way around the top to start with where the struts are pulling it It'll be quite hard to do this and, and certainly your fingers can suffer with the pins. Right, having done that, we're going to turn it up like that and we're going to pull again and put a pin in the point of each strut. I will do another video on how to line a a shade and do it properly you can there'll be one on balloon lining which would mean that you don't see any of the struts inside so I'm pinning all the way around the top with my pins and I'm pushing them in across and into the binding and you need to do this all the way around the top and all the way around the bottom. Watch your fingers, it can be a dangerous process. As pulling your fabric taut all the time. Pushing in all the way around. Sometimes you'll find that your pins bend you go through a lot of pins and I'll continue around there and then I'll continue around to do the same thing on the bottom until I have completely pinned the entire shade so there you have if you want to you can use a that fray stop on your seams. Um, it shouldn't really fray too much, especially when the lampshade is not going to be used, but that's what you can do for an unlined shade. All right, so we're all pinned and we're all stretched, nice and taut, just like a drum. There's a few bits there that need to be stretched in a little bit more. Let's pull it in, that's it. And what I'm going to use is a needle and thread. I'm using a very strong nylon thread and just an ordinary standard needle. And I'm going to start anywhere on the top, it doesn't matter, making sure that you catch the, uh, the binding underneath and keep sewing all the way around the top and then consequently the bottom. And you will get attacked by these pins, so be careful. So I just want to show you that when you're sewing, you can use just an ordinary running stitch. You don't have to be too particular about them, but make sure that you pull and stretch your fabric as you're sewing. When you come to your pin, take it out, and I'll just throw it onto the table, pick them up later, because I don't want to lose my momentum. Keep stretching and sewing, and when you get to the point of the strut, make sure that you catch everything in so that it doesn't move around. Keep it tight. I've now stitched right the way around the bottom and the top. 
as you can see it's lovely and tight taut a bit like a drum so what we need to do now is to trim off these edges and for this I'm going to use a pair of embroidery scissors and I'm simply going to cut as close to the edge as I can without cutting through the stitches. So I'll do that all the way around the top and all the way around the bottom and then I'll come back to you and we'll do the pretty bit. So what I'm going to do now, it's completed, we need to cover, that's a bit of blood, that's what happens from all these pins, but we'll cover that up. We're going to cover this edge with braid in order to cover up all those bits and pieces. I need to trim that down a bit more. And you can use the traditional way with this is to sew. But these days with the adhesives we have, which they didn't have in the olden days, we don't need to do that. So I usually use a strong uh, multi-purpose adhesive. And around we go. And we take our braid. And we just stick it on. That covers up. A multitude of untidiness. Wait for it to dry. So we'll come back to this once I've completed the bottom. So I've completed that. I've put this lovely braid all the way around the bottom, just covering over the top of that binding. And you'll notice I've also covered the binding at the top, inside the top. So that covers the binding inside the top. So the next thing we're going to do is to take the braid of our choice. In this case, I'm using this one. And we want to cover all those seam lines. So we're going to cut eight pieces. And we're going to do the same with those right the way down. So again, using your glue. Down there, like that. I often sew on my, my pretty bits, but that is the traditional way. That was the way I was taught by my mother 40 years ago. So I've been doing it for a very, very long time. But if you continue to do that all the way round, then we'll come back to the next piece. So I put all the braid around the lampshade and it looks really pretty and now we need to decide what we're going to do in the way of trim. Obviously I have got some lovely six inch golden trim here which I'm going to use and again I'm going to put that on with my adhesive. I'm then going to overlay, I've got this beautiful trim which I'm going to overlay. Only... Sorry, I keep knocking the video camera. Um, I'm going to overlay the gold with the blue, just because I think it's beautiful, like that. So I'll do that, and then I'll show you what it's like. But the first thing I'm going to do again, just use my adhesive all the way around there, like that on top of the stitching and I'm going to attach this beautiful six inch golden fringe all the way round. So I've, um, I've attached the braid, beaded braid over the golden trim. I'll take off all these little bits and pieces of threads as I go along. And what I'm going to do now, you will notice that the top needs to be sorted out. We need to put some fabric trim around the top there. So I'll do exactly the same with that as I've done with the bottom. I found this beautiful golden braid which I think fits in really well with peacocks. And I'm going to attach that around the top there. And then on top of that, I'm going to put some braid. 
So there we have the completed shade. So what you're going to need, you're going to need some fabric. For a 14 inch frame of this type, you're probably going to need about one yard or a meter. You're going to need some pins. You're going to need some sharp scissors. You're going to need some cotton tape. You can buy all of these things on eBay. You're going to need some nylon thread. It's very strong. You're going to need some French chalk, Taylor's chalk, to draw your pattern. You're going to need a piece of cardboard to make your template and a cushion to work on. You're going to need some glue and you're going to need some trims. In my case, I used the beautiful golden six inch fringing overlaid with the beaded fabric and you're going to need a sewing machine just a straight stitch that's all you need and one tip when you are stitching your panels together make sure you do it twice to give each panel strength